Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a zombie action film, Valley of the Dead. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in 1938. Spain is in the midst of a violent civil war between the Republicans and the Francoists. Nazi Germans have pledged their support to the Francoists. One day, a Nazi soldier arrives at a small village and interrupts a wedding celebration. His underlings all fire at the wedding guests and kill them. Afterward, they release several canisters containing a strange green chemical. Meanwhile, a man in a blindfold is having a close brush with death. He is standing in front of a firing squad that will shoot him any second now. He tries to smooth talk his way out of his problem by saying that his uncle is a prominent general. But the firing squad does not want to listen. Luckily, his uncle appears and intervenes for him. He manages to stop the man's execution. The blindfolded man's name is Jan and he is a captain in the Frankoist army. He has a reputation for being a smartass and a rebel. As a lawyer, he's been helping many deserters evade punishment. However, he recently attacked a judge who was very close with the Francoists, hence why he was almost killed by the firing squad. But his uncle wasn't able to get him off completely scot-free. In exchange for amnesty, the Francoists are sending Jan on a suicide mission. He has to go behind enemy lines and cross a mountain range to deliver a message to a general. One of the soldiers he helped, a young and naive private, will be coming with him as his driver. The two of them immediately get ready. Before leaving the base, Jan encounters a wounded friend of his on a stretcher. As an act of kindness, he likes the man's cigarette before he is handed over to the nurses for treatment. Jan also sees the Nazi soldier in the base. They drive through miles of forest. While driving, Jan asks the private why he joined the war. The private replies that his village is known for its delicious puff pastries made by nuns. If the Republicans won, they would attack the nunnery and kill the nuns, resulting in the loss of the puff pastry recipe. The private couldn't bear the thought of such delicious treats being lost forever, so he joined the Francoists to protect the nuns. While on the road, they witness two fighter planes shooting at each other in midair. One plane loses control, and the pilot has to parachute to survive. They watch as the parachute drifts down to the thick forest. Jan orders the private to stop the car, so they can help the pilot. They walk through the forest, and eventually discover that the pilot is already dead. They are about to turn back when a group of Republican soldiers find them and hold them at gunpoint. The group is led by a man named Group Leader. He realizes that Jan is a captain, and for him to be wandering around enemy territory, he must be on an important mission. He instructs his female soldier named Manicures to search Jan for any clue as to what his mission is. She carefully feels the lining of his uniform and jacket until she reaches his boot. There, she finds the paper containing the message Jan was sent to deliver. When group leader opens the paper, there is only one line urging the general that war is won by having balls. He thinks it's some kind of coded message, and he asks Jan what the meaning is. But Jan realizes that this is his uncle making up the mission, so Jan would die. Group leader decides to take Jan and the private captive to the camp. The group starts their trek, while the American journalist with them stays behind to take a picture of the pilot's corpse, hanging from his parachute. As he inches closer to take the shot, the pilot suddenly comes to life and bites the journalist. The rest of the group hears his screams, and they shoot the pilot. But even when his legs are dismembered, the pilot is crawling very fast, and he almost reaches the group until someone shoots him right in the head. The group is astounded as to how the pilot was still alive. The journalist is now also dead, but moments later, he rises back to life. He is growling and screaming, and tries to attack the group. They shoot him, and he goes down. But he just comes back to life again, until one Russian soldier twists his neck. They continue their walk until they arrive at the Republicans' camp. But everyone in the camp is dead, and there are bodies everywhere. Madakuris bends down over the corpse of a woman she knows. Suddenly, the woman's eyes fly open, and she rises again. However, she's exhibiting the same aggressive behavior as the pilot and the journalist. Slowly, the other corpses around the camp rise too. One of the young Republican soldiers in their group recognizes his father among the resin soldiers, so he goes to him. But his father just kills him. Group leader does not want to shoot their comrades, but it appears that they are no longer human. With the Russian soldiers' lead, they start shooting indiscriminately. But the zombies are not deterred by the bullets. Jan orders them to shoot the head, and Metakuras obeys, killing several zombies. There are too many zombies, so the group rush to the shore where a boat is tied. They manage to board the boat and set sail for the river before the zombies catch up to them. At this point, the survivors include five of them and two more Republican soldiers. Group leader decides that their next move will be to reach the safe house he knows in the mountains, where they can radio for help and learn what's been happening. 
They also decide that they should have a temporary peace in the meantime and help each other survive the zombies first, before they get back to the Civil War. They dock the boat to start walking to the house deep in the mountains. One Republican soldier named Glasses approaches group leader and proposes that they kill Jan and the private, but group leader turns down this idea because there's already been enough dead people. After a few meters, several zombies are waiting for them. They run through the forest. Jan saves Manicuras by shooting a zombie right behind her. The Russian soldier is bitten by a zombie and attacked by several others, so they have to leave him behind. It is already night when they reach the safe house. Group leader notices that the lights in the cabin are on. When they enter the house, they see that there is a nun inside. With her are two Francois soldiers, a lieutenant and a Muslim. Jan tries to introduce himself as a captain from their army, but they don't believe his smelly bullshit because he is with the Republicans. The soldiers all point their guns at each other, but Jan convinces them to drop their hostility so they can all band together. The group sits down around the table, and the new additions share that they were also attacked by zombies earlier in the day. The nun treats the wound that group leader got. They decide that they will stay and rest in the house for the night, and they will split the ammunition and food. Since the Republicans do not believe in religion or God, group leader asks the nun if the Bible has any explanation for what is happening. The nun replies that God has nothing to do with this, but someone else is trying to play God. As they settle for the night, the three of them are stationed in the attic so they can keep watch. Another Republican soldier, Mecca, and the private initially bond over their fascination with cars, and the private realizes that Mecca is a famous racer he was a fan of when he was a kid. He tells Mecca that he can race again when the war is over. But Mecca has turned bitter over the years, and he screams that he will never race again because he will probably be dead by the end of the war. The Republicans are losing and the Francoists are closing in on them. The Muslim then asks Mecca why he is still fighting when he knows that they will lose. Mecca answers that when he starts a race, he always finishes it, no matter what. As the night wears on, the group becomes more comfortable. Jan finds himself staring after Matakuras, while group leader is also drawn to the nun. Glasses pulls out the telephone from the cabin and tries to contact someone. Jan sits by the fireplace and lights a cigarette on the paper that his uncle gave him. Words begin to appear on the paper. Matakuras is washing herself in the bathroom when the lieutenant corners her and her hormones. He tries to intimidate her into sleeping with him. But she fiercely explains to him that she has a reputation for being a priest killer because she tortured the priest who abused her little sister, which then scares the hormones out of the lieutenant. Upstairs, Mecca spies several zombies coming toward the house. He warns the group and they quickly vacate the premises. Mecca lights a dynamite and it explodes after he leaves, killing the zombies inside the house. They go deep inside the forest again. They find the Russian soldier, now a zombie, wandering around the area. Matakuras urges group leader to kill the Russian soldier so he can be at peace. She closes her eyes as group leader shoots their comrade in the head. Afterward, Jen pulls out the paper and shows them the map that was revealed by the fire. The map is written in German, so Jan can only understand a few words. He guesses that it's detailing the advance of some kind of attack on the area, but the attack is not carried out by human troops. Instead, the zombies being created by the Germans' biological weapon are the ones waging the attack against Republican forces and the Spanish people. So he proposes that they go to the place in the middle of the map where the whole thing originated. They go to the town indicated on the map. Glasses takes group leader aside and shares with him his plan of stealing the formula the Germans used in making zombies so the Republicans can use it in the war. But group leader refuses. The group sees a church where the Germans have left their equipment. Hiding inside the confession booth is the bride from the beginning of the film. She recounts how the Nazi soldier and his underlings arrived at her wedding party and shot all her guests. Her husband protected her from the bullets with his bulletproof muscles by covering her with his body. Afterward, the Germans released the blue chemical and the soldiers hid inside the church. The bride crawled to the cellar and hid there. She watched as her dead guests all rose to life as zombies. The Germans were all laughing and celebrating as the zombies began to eat the other living people. However, after some time, the infection spread to the church and the Germans began killing each other until there was no one left. Suddenly, Glasses announces that he found the formula the Germans are using to make zombies. He will take the formula to the communists so they can use it to decimate the Germans. He wants the Republicans to come with him and they will leave the Francoist behind. However, group leader and Matakuras disagree with him since Jan and the others have fought with them. So Glasses just decides to leave them all behind. Suddenly, a group of zombies attack and devour him and his smelly part. The rest of the group run toward the tunnels under the church to escape. However, the bride suddenly turns into a zombie and attacks the lieutenant. The Muslim and the nud try to help him, but the bride bites the Muslim's boot. Matakuras finally shoots the bride in the head, ending her wedding life. 
The group debates leaving the Muslim behind since he was bitten, but he shows them that her teeth didn't make it to his protected foot. The group emerges out of the tunnels and back into the mountain. Group leader turns around and sees that the nun has locked herself inside the tunnel. She reveals that she was bitten by the bride in the leg, and she's going to stay behind to take care of the zombies. Group leader is sad, but he lets the nun go with his blessing. Outside, Jan comes up with a plan to steal the antidote. After reading the map, he also realizes that the Frankois and the Germans are planning on distributing the blue powder to the rest of the country. Jan does not want that to happen, so he tells the group that they should go to the outpost, where the trains filled with blue powder are being readied. Group leader agrees, but only on the condition that when they get captured after everything, he wants his comrades to be pardoned, and he will take on the punishment of death himself. Later on, the private successfully repairs a truck that was left in the town, and he picks up the group. They arrive at the outpost, and Jan walks alone to the gate, where his uncle and the Nazi soldier are waiting. He wants them to open the gates to his comrades and enemies, but the uncle only wants him inside. The Francoists do not care that people are going to die, and they plan on bombing the whole valley anyway. Jan goes back to the group, and they come up with another plan. The private reveals that he was bitten by a zombie when he was fixing the truck. He now intends to carry explosives and trigger them, so the gates would explode and they can enter the outpost. Jan tearfully says goodbye to the private. The kid walks to the outpost, but he was shot dead by other soldiers. He then rises up as a zombie and successfully triggers the explosives. The group enters the outpost, but a huge zombie horde is already on their heels. The lieutenant chooses to make his own fate, so he separates himself from the group. Mecha also gets on a motorcycle, so he can distract the zombies. The lieutenant is cornered by a zombie, but the Muslim saves him. However, a zombie appears behind the Muslim and drags him to his death. The lieutenant runs his smelly ass away with a crowd of zombies after his smell. He dives inside a truck. Moments later, Mecha appears and gets inside as well. The keys are not inside the truck, so the two men are trapped. Knowing that their deaths are at hand, the two men set aside their differences and share a moment of comfort. They talk about the wives and families they lost to the war. Mecha realizes that there is a box of explosives sitting on the truck bed. He pulls out a dynamite and lights it. The two men toast Spain before the whole truck explodes and kills the zombies. It is now only Jan, Matacuras, and group leader left alive. Group leader hops on the train and tries to get it started, while Jan and Matacuras go inside the train car to find an antidote. The Nazi is waiting for them inside, and he reveals that there is no antidote. He then injects himself with his own toxin and transforms into a zombie. But Matacuras shoots him in the head before he could show his zombified muscles to her. However, there was another zombie waiting behind the curtain, and he bites Jan in the hand. Matacuras shoots the zombie. Without another word, she takes out her knife and chops off Jan's hormone let go hand to prevent the spread of infection. Meanwhile, group leader is attacked by zombies. Before killing himself, he whispers that he hopes he can see the nun in the afterlife. The train gets going, and it leaves the outpost just as the bombings start. Matacuras and Jan lock themselves in a steel box as zombies rush toward them in the train car. Before the bombs fall, the two share a light kiss without using their tongues. They wake up with the zombies dead and the train still moving. At the back of the train, the Muslim is also alive too. With all the zombie chemicals in the train car and all the infected bond, they have ensured that the infection won't spread anymore. Later, Matakuras drops Jan off at his village. He tries to get her to join him, but she insists that they will never truly work because of their different ideologies. She rides off into the sunset, and the movie ends with Jan smoking a cigarette, single-handed, and walking to his village. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.